So you have the VCA chemistry exam coming up. Well, here is how I prepared to get a Roll46, as well as some tips and tricks to use in your final exam. My approach for chemistry revision was largely the same with my other subjects, which I cover in more detail in this video linked above. But just as a quick summary, here it is. First, I review all my notes for the subject just to refresh my understanding of all the content that we've been taught. And a good way to check your understanding is to go through the study design and see if you can answer every dot point. Second, I did untimed practice exams to get used to the style of questions as well as understand the concepts on a deeper level. Third, now we want to start doing timed practice exams to make sure that we can finish all the questions within the time limit. And as a optional step, if there's a particular topic that you struggle with, for example, for me, it was galvanic cells, then you might like to go through lots of practice exams only doing questions related to galvanic cells. And this means we can maximize our efficiency by only practicing our weak points so they don't drag us down. So that was my general approach for chemistry revision. And now I just wanted to address some questions associated with this process. How many exams did I do? So all up, I did around 30 practice exams. But as I mentioned before, not all of them were done under exam conditions. And I personally think out of these 30, the most useful exams are the three most recent VCAR exams, so the official papers. And this is because they contain the style of questions that are most likely to come up again. And also make sure to review the examiner's report for things to do, as well as things to avoid during your actual exam. Finally, don't forget about the Northern Hemisphere exams. They exist for VCE chemistry, and the questions are also of a high quality. How to get the most out of each practice exam. Reviewing each practice exam is the key part of improving. And so what I did was I had a notebook where I would make a list of all the difficult questions that I came across during my practice exams. And this was the main thing that I reviewed before my actual test. And the reason this is useful is because you'll start to notice certain trends. For example, if you notice that you keep getting questions relating to fuels wrong, then rather than doing full practice exams, which can be quite time consuming, then you can go through lots of practice exams only doing the questions related to fuels. Because essentially, we want to focus on the areas that we struggle the most, and this gives us the best return for our time investment. Trending questions in chemistry exams. A trend with VCE chemistry exam questions is there's more and more of these longer application styled questions that are worth quite a lot of marks. And to do well in this area, it just comes down to understanding what the assessors really want. And this is why when I come across one of these questions, I first do it to the best of my capability, and then I check my answer with the examiner's report. But very often, if not all of the time, I will miss out on a lot of points that the assessors want. And so what I do now is I print out another copy of the question, and then I try and redo it and formulate a better and more perfect response. Now, the reason for this isn't because we want to be perfectionists, but rather if we just look at an answer, nine out of 10 times, we probably will forget it after a couple of days. So I'm not saying that we should write out the answer a thousand times to drill it into our heads. The purpose here is by simply putting in some more effort into forming a better response from the examiner's mindset, you're able to focus more on the smaller details that you might have glanced over. And this helps us understand the question on a much deeper level. Now let's move on to some useful tips and tricks to use in your final exam. What order should I do the exam? So I started off with short answer, so section B, and then I moved back to section A, which is the multiple choice. And the reason for this is because I found short answer generally easier, especially for the first couple of parts of a question. And so I could do these questions and ease my nerves as well as build up the confidence and momentum to finish the rest of the exam. And also you might come across short answer questions like this. For example, this one is worth five marks, but oftentimes you only need to write a couple of sentences to get most of the marks. And in my experience, this takes much less time than answering five separate multiple choice questions. And this means that doing short answer was more time efficient. And not to mention that time pressure can be an issue. And so if you are running out of time, you can always guess the multiple choice and have a 25% chance of getting it correct. And on the other hand, 
If you were able to somehow guess the answer to one of these questions, then I'll definitely have some respect for you. What did I do during reading time? So following from above, this is why I like to spend most of my reading time going through the short answer questions, with a particular focus on those questions that have a lot of words in them. And so I spend my time going through each sentence and mapping out my answer in my head, and that way I could quickly finish these questions once writing time started. Use dot points. So I highly recommend using dot points wherever you can in your answers. And this is because not only does it save time, but this also makes it much easier for your examiner to see what points you're trying to make and give you the appropriate marks. And trust me, don't try and outsmart the assessors by dumping down every single bit of information you know, hoping that they're going to find extra marks. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Know your data book. What I did as a part of my revision was I annotated a copy of the data book. And yes, I know you can't bring this into the exam, but just by annotating the data book, this made me understand the data book in more detail, as well as how to maximize the information that they give you. And so in the description below, you'll find an annotated data book that I found quite useful during my exam revision. Use shorthand. So rather than writing out Le Chatelier's principle, you can just write LCP. Fatty acid methyl ester, you can just write fame. For increase or decrease, you can just write an up or down arrow. And for concentration, you can just use square brackets like so. My exam scores and realistic expectations. So looking at my statement of results, I got a raw 46 while losing 17 marks on my final exam. So I got 103 out of 120, which is about 86%. And this was for the 2020 exam. And yes, I know that the mark distribution is going to be different each year. But the point that I'm trying to get at is that chemistry can be very challenging. And this is why we want to focus on getting the marks where we can. We don't have to ace every single question. If you see a hard one that you just don't get, then don't worry, skip it and keep up the momentum. And that way you'll maximize your chances of doing as well as possible. So all of that has been my greatest advice on how to do well on the chemistry exam. I hope that was helpful and all the best.